Okay. Um, hi, everybody. And um, Nicole, can you let me know if um, someone named Jesse comes in? Because he's another member and I want to um, give him a chance to talk. And in fact, if you see anyone from Community Print pop in, um, let me know. I will do that. Okay. So, um, so Nicole introduced me. My name is Kelsey. Um, I am one of the members of Community Print. There's uh, currently four, uh, four, nope, five, five of us um, that are organizing members. Um, so we have Jesse, Alethea, Lily, and Michelle. Michelle's our treasurer. Um, and uh, we're always looking for new members. And I'll say that one more time for the people in the back. We're always looking for new members. Um, we are uh, a collectively run letter letterpress shop in Olympia, Washington. We make the beautiful and the tangible in an antiquated fashion. Um, we're located at 316 Capital Way North. We're right next to, if you've seen the new Revival Motors coffee shop and uh, motorcycle repair that um, is in the space that used to be Don's Cameras. We're directly next door, um, just down the street from the farmer's market. Uh, near the bread peddler, pretty good location. Uh, we provide introductory letterpress workshops at least six times a year, usually every other month in normal time. And then occasionally we do kind of special one-off classes, like we have done uh, a couple of classes with Kitty Koppelman, uh, teaching reduction lino, lino cut prints. And then Jesse, uh, one of our members, just recently before the COVID struck, um, did a workshop on how to set up your own screen printing studio. So we do some things like that as well. Um, I'm gonna kind of read for a minute and then I'm gonna take you on a tour, a little brief tour of the shop and hopefully my reading won't go on too long. Uh, I uh, gathered some stuff that I thought was interesting to me and hopefully it'll be interesting to you too. So I'm going to start with kind of a short history of community print. Uh, we started as, and, and I should add that I'm kind of in, I've been sort of intermittently working on making a zine of the history of community print because I think it's really fascinating. There's probably well over 100 people that have lived in Olympia that have kind of um, been uh, participants in community print. And it has a really rich history after being around for over 20 years. So uh, as far as I can tell, Community Print started about in 1998 in the space formerly known as ACE Investigations on 508 Legion Way. The building was a creative space above the Fishtail Brewing Warehouse that included studio spaces for Nikki McClure, Della Mars, Al Larson, Rebecca Piercy of Queen Bee, um, Lucas Gray had a studio in there. He drew for the Simpsons in the space. And uh, K Records and Dub Narcotic recording studios. And there were other people in there as well. Um, the building now houses the knitting mills. If you've been to the knitting mills, that's the space that Community Print was in when I first got involved. Um, and now it's a feminist art collective with lots of wonderful people, including several former community print members. So uh, I, I have been kind of collecting this information from different people uh, who were involved with community print over the years. And Amber Bell, uh, who now lives in Portland, was one of the founding members. And she wrote a little thing that I thought was really wonderful. So I hope you'll... Uh, humor me and let me read this out loud. So, so this was Amber's little description of community print. Before community print, 508 Legion Way was the headquarters for ACE Investigation, where a group of people gathered to pay attention, to inquire, to consider the many mysteries of the world. 1996, she said. Among, so that's when ACE Investigation started. Among many other things, we played soccer, critiqued each other's creative projects, and presented art on the subject of hair. There was a zine that came out of that. At some point, it became arduous for a group of loosely affiliated doers and makers to maintain the rent on a group space. Stella Mars had a lot of screen printing to do, 
Al Larson had a vision about bringing people together with printing projects. Stella and Al had a beautiful little sign maker flatbed proof press that originally had been used to print department store sale signs for button down shirts and a few tiny trays of type that have probably found, um, they had probably found in some warehouse in Tacoma. I have a memory of spending a long time standing over the utility sink in the back hallway, scrumpy, scrubbing ink off lead type with a lot of citrusol. I can't remember where the wood type came from, but it was a miracle. Phil's friend, that's Phil Elvram uh, from the microphones and other, other bands. Uh, Phil's friend Kara shared cuts she had collected in Anacortis. Lots of people gathered more type, gathered expertise from masters like Elspeth Pope and Jocelyn Dome um, of Sherwood Press. And Elspeth was, uh, was, I don't know if she was called Pope Press. I'm trying to remember, uh, in Shelton. Anyways, amazing woman in Shelton. I have a memory of driving up from California with a cabinet of type roped to the top of my Honda Civic, but maybe it was just in the back seat. We printed a lot of things, handbound book covers, album covers, posters, menus, all very scrappy and lovingly and perfect. In the summer, I remember doing a lot of printing in a bathing suit or something. In the winter, the radiators were always hot. I remember that too. Um, Helen, uh, that's Helen Baldwin book, my, one of my best friend's daughters, read the entire Harry Potter books series curled up in the silky orange chairs that Shannon Wianecki found at an estate sale, while Katie Baldwin printed immaculate woodcuts in many layers. We gave grossly informal trainings on how to use the press whenever anyone figured out who to ask. I think it was me for several years until I started teaching kindergarten and didn't have time anymore. Amelia Davis took over after that, maybe in 2003. Community print at 508 Legion Way was part of a golden time, inextricably linked to the teeming creativity of tiny artist businesses, to the perpetual sound of music being constructed on the other side of the wall, and to a community built on shared resources. So I just thought that was so lovely at the beginning. So, um, so moving on in the history, after Legion Way, we um, ended up having to move out of that space. Um, community print ended up in a few different places. This is some of the history that's a little nebulous for me. I know it was in at least two garages. Um, and then it ended up in the back of Dumpster Values, uh, where we lived in a little spot under the stairs for 10 years. Um, our rent was a hundred dollars, uh, and that was when I kind of got back involved with community print after going to grad school and duck it out for a little bit. Um, so when Conoco decided she needed her space back in the back of Dumpster Values, we moved into a little side room at Northern, which was an all ages music and art venue, really awesome, um, in a little building that was attached to the Fishtail Brew Tub, Brew Pub. I think it's, uh, it has something to do with animals now. And when Northern closed less than a year later, we moved into the Ward Building on 4th Avenue, which is right next to Jake's. When the Ward Building got purchased to be developed into Annie's Artist Loft in 2016, we looked for a long time for a space, and we ended up moving into storage at Quality Self Storage uh, in downtown Olympia. There was an empty storefront owned by the Quality Self Storage that used to be a weed store. And I heckled the owners once a month for about a year um, while the storage business was in the process of being sold. They finally sold the business and the new, the new owners who are based in Seattle agreed to rent the space to us. So we, um, we basically moved through the hallways of the storage space with our presses and everything um through a door into the storefront so that was really um awesome for us if anyone's ever moved to print shop you know that it's not fun uh and we originally shared with sam gray from sound audio repair and ricky rodriguez who makes hats um under the business name he toast toasty threads and then ricky moved to seattle 
his space is now occupied by Jesse and Gloria, who do uh, music and screen printing in there. And Sam is still here with sound audio repair. And we're hoping to sign a new lease on this space when our lease is up in July once again. So we've been here two years and we're really hoping we don't have to move. Um, and that brings us to where we are today. So that's kind of a brief history. Just a little bit more about how community print works. Anyone can be involved with community print. Uh, the kind of general path to printing here independently is to take a group class. Uh, we usually have about six people in the class because that's what we can ac accommodate with the size of the space. Um, after you take your group class, you can, if you enjoyed it, take a one-on-one -on -one class where we kind of work with you. Uh, and you do your own independent project and one of the members of community print kind of hangs out and helps you out, uh, but you do all the work. And then after you take your group class and your one-on-one -on -one class, we add you to a Google calendar. Um, we have keys available for checkout at Danger Room Comics. You can sign up to uh, print for a day um, or a month or six months. And uh, if you're really into it and you decide you want to become an organizing member, we uh, would love to have you. And then we just kind of like help with the rent and teach classes and keep the space running. So uh, there's a lot of different levels of commitment. And the more you uh, use the shop, the cheaper it gets. I think we're probably cheaper than almost any letterpress shop around. So that's kind of the base, basic of how, how we work. Um, so now I'm going to try and give you a tour of the shop. So I'm going to try and turn my camera around and kind of walk around a little bit. Okay. Um, so I'm going to give you a little short tour of the shop. Can you still hear me okay? Yes. Yep. Okay, great. Um, I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to kind of go around the top of the space so that you can see some of the prints. Uh, I'm going to show you some of the presses and the type cases and I'm going to start with some prints so I'm going to try and move really slowly so these are kind of hanging up around the top of our space um, this is just some of the many many prints that have been made at community print over the years little banner with community print I think Hughie made that this print, Today I Will Walk, um, was made by Hughie as well. The Planned Parenthood sign was made by Naomi Bell. Um, the Endgame poster was made by Maddox Pratt, who now lives in Germany. Um, the uh, Against Homophobia and Against Islamophobia was one of our group projects um, when we did a group class. I made the let's do something. Uh, the fuck technology sign, excuse me, um, was Temba Lewis, who has made many, many, many prints in this shop. Um, and one of the presses we have belongs to him. Here's um, a few prints that were made by Temba that are framed. He's super, super talented. No, he's in Thailand. Um, was a member for many, many years. Uh, there's another that I want to right here, right now, that's Temba. Um, the white people's work, you might have seen that around on t-shirts, that's by Kitty Koppelman. I'm not sure who made this one. Okay, uh, the Dig It is another group project. Um, this poster, I don't know who made this, but maybe McLeod. Um, it says, it's important to me that I use the privilege given to me by society to help people who are forced into positions that they aren't comfortable with. I love that one. Um, here's a Sarah Utter original. Sarah Utter was a member of Community Print for many, many years as well. Uh, I think that's Maddox, the We're Not Beginning. Um, this was another, that was like an arts walk project. Um, the Punk and Punctual, I made that as a fundraiser for Northern. 
this one's cool, Bands Against Butch, uh, General Meeting. That was a long time ago. Um, this print I get asked about all the time. This was made by Amber Bell. Um, people still want copies of this print, and there's very few of them. And um, it's uh, equivalents, and it's got some recipes on it, too. That took her a long time. Uh, that one's another Temba. There's my, one of my bingo prints. Another group project. The Create, Repeat, Destroy, that was um, Anne DeMarkin brought her class in and they made those as, I think they were um, zine covers. Uh, another Naomi. That's me. The one with the trees, I think, was Jerk um, Kinsley, who was another member for many years. Uh, let's see. This is um, Jean. Made the hold each other close. That's a poster from Vito Valera. Uh, yeah, there's so many. Another Sarah Utter. Sorry, it's dark here. It's light. And um, this is our original list of rules, <laughs> which is still pretty good. Um, we've added some rules, but basically like clean up after yourself. Um, sign up on the calendar when you're going to print. We have a log book where people leave like little notes about projects they're working on. Uh, okay, this is um, one of our presses. This is our newest press. This is a um, Corex um, Super 10. I think that's what it's called. Um, it's an electric press. It's German. It's really made life pretty great for us to have an electric press that paints itself. Um, it does need a little bit of work, and we uh, have Paul Moxon, who's another letterpress printer. We had him kind of lined up to come and do some work on all of our presses, and then the corona happened, so not sure when that's going to happen. Um, that's one of our presses. Um, here's all of our ink kind of loosely sorted by color. And then the kind of weird stuff is on the bottom. Um, here's another press. This is our original press that we've had for a very long time, which belongs to Temba and um, Ted Quo. And this is a um, Vandercook proof press. These were kind of designed to for people that are just doing looking to do a quick print and, and check that everything is spelled right and everything. Um, they're not electric. You have to ink all of the um, type on these by hand. So just, you know, it's just basically a base and a roller. Really easy to use for beginners. So this is the one that we teach our group classes on. Uh, whoops, here's all of our paper. We get lots of donated paper and ink, um, and we're always looking for more. So if you ever have paper or printing ink that you'd like to donate, we'll happily take it. Um, this is our pegboard with sprayers and um, palette knives and coins, which you use to lock up the type. And here's our rag bins. We have a very technical system of cleanish rags and dirtyish rags. So they go from the cleanish to the dirtyish, and then they go in the garbage. And here's our list of unfulfilled dreams. <laughs> These are all the things that we want. Um, we're always looking for phone books and rags, by the way. Toothbrushes, we'll take toothbrush donations. Um, here's a poster from the Third Thing Press. 
who just kind of got started in the last year. They're publishing a bunch of books. Um, this is like a one of their practice prints. So they came out much nicer than that later. Um, and then this is our third press. This is a Gordon Jobber press. So this is a little little um, flattened press. So you put the ink up here um, and it turns. You put your paper down here. There's rollers here that we're kind of just keeping covered for now that roll up over the flatten and then onto the type, which goes down here. Sorry, goes down here underneath this paper. Um, let me see if I can get this one rolling for a second. I don't know why that paper's there, but so this one's a treadle press. I think we're just keeping the rollers covered while we weren't using it. And we bought this for $600 from someone who was getting rid of it in Portland. That's a really good deal. Um, we've got a bunch of um, storage flat files. These are all, these have archives of different things that people have worked on over the years. Here's a, I went to community print and all I got was the stinking card. This was a, um, a group project when somebody was learning. Here's a crazy thing that Angela Spencer made. I don't know if you can see, there's used almost, these, these little pictures are called cuts. And I think he used like three quarters of the cuts in our shop um, to make this. There's all sorts of cool prints in here um, from many, many years. Um, we use all non-toxic processes. So we clean up with vegetable oil and squeezy, which is basically just Dawn dishwashing detergent and water in a spray bottle. Um, we don't use any chemicals um, to do our cleaning here. And we use mostly uh, regular letterpress inks, which are oil-based or soy-based mostly. Um, and let's see, what else? Here's our desk. Here's our log book. Um, so here's like people leaving different notes about stuff that they worked on in community prints. I love this log book. I really love, um, this is Devin DeMonte writes like a book. <laughs> He's one of our um, volunteers and he sorts type and does all sorts of things like that. Um, got a little, a little collection of books here about letterpress and other things. Um, the, cute little letter, little book of letterpress. So if you're um, interested in learning letterpress and you've taken your intro class, you can just come in and read these whenever you want. Um, this is a furniture rack. So these are all made out of wood and we use these to kind of fill spaces when we're setting up type. They're different lengths. Um, here's a bunch of type that needs to be sorted. It's been here for about a year. <laughs> um, we do have an awesome member, Lily Hayho, um, who's been sorting our type one drawer at a time, which is an incredible amount of work. Um, so when she sorts it, she writes done on it. And um, this is all... These are all sorted type. And then she's been making little spec sheets with the type face on it so that we can see what's in the drawers. This one's called OS Phoenix. So she is the most productive volunteer we have, I would say. 
Um, and as you can see, we have drawers and drawers of type. We're in the process of kind of slowly getting rid of the type that's under about 10 point because nobody uses it in here. We make lots of posters and things like that. Um, so we just don't have a need for it and we could use the drawer space. So um, here's another drawer that she finished. This is uh, medium, medium Gothic. And this one is bold poster Gothic. I love this one. This one's, we have very little of this type. And as you can see, we're missing some letters. So um, these cases are arranged um, in a certain order that's supposed to be kind of more ergonomic for the printers of yore. Uh, so this is called a California job case. I don't know if you can see that, but this is kind of the order that the letters are arranged. And you can see that the letters that are used the most, like C, D, E, H, I, O, um, are all in the bigger spaces and they're closer together. So once you're doing this for a while, you start to kind of memorize the case order. But we have these laminated sheets for people that are still learning and remembering. Uh, these are some type that we just bought. Uh, from Skyline Type Foundry, which is in Arizona. So this is um, Smiley Faces. I love this type. And let's see, this is like a cool little, you can make um, little banners. This one's kind of a little more complicated to use. Here's some new cuts that are little pictures of animals. I haven't gotten to use these yet. And then this is um, a bunch of smiley faces. <laughs> so, um, okay. Do we have any questions? I was gonna make a um, a print when we get to the end of this tour. Oh, and here's some here's some of the kind of assorted wood type. As you can see, none of this. Um, is a complete set. So we just kind of collect it and use what we can find. We do have some sets of wood type too. So there's. And this stuff is very warm. So it, it prints very unevenly and we kind of like it that way. We like things to look a little bit imperfect. Um, since we're all self taught, we just kind of, you know. It's, uh, it's a real imperfect process. There are a few comments. Um, Mariella said, Sarah Utter made the Devin Williams print from, from earlier. I think that was one Thank of the- Thank you. Okay, great. I couldn't remember who made that. And Stephanie said, your new space looks amazing and there's light, exclamation point, exclamation point. <laughs> we actually need more light. I have some, um, I don't know if you can see up here. We're missing, um, like, it's only uh, one bulb in each of these instead of two. And um, I bought some more, but I'm not tall enough to get them up there. I need, I need a ladder that's not this gigantic ladder that we have here. So what else? Any other comments? This is spacing. This goes in between letters. Um, just a little piece of metal. Lynette, did you have something? Yeah. Uh, yeah, hi. I have two questions. Yeah. Um, what is the thing that you usually produce uh, the most of? Is it posters or, I don't know, t-shirts? Or what is your usual client look like and what do they want? And also, um, okay. uh, the, the second one, I'll just get this out so you can answer both of them, is um, what kind of, what, what are the rags that you need? Are they, do they need to be all um, natural fibers or can it be anything? Thanks. Okay. Um, so your first question, what do we make the most of? I would say posters. Um, broadsides is another way of talking about them. Um, Community Print has made many, many band posters over the years and posters for events around town. Um, we used to have a screen printing shop uh 
back when we were in the back of dumpster values and possibly before that as well when we were um, in the space on Legion, but we don't do screen printing um, in our shop anymore. So we don't really print on fabric. Um, but what a lot of people do is they make um, a letterpress print and then they turn it into a screen and then they burn it and, and you know, make t-shirts and things like that. So that does happen like that kitty toppled in the, um, the white people's work. Um, she turned that into a t-shirt and has given like hundreds of them away for free. So, um, and then the rags t-shirt like ripped up t-shirts um it's nice if they're mostly cotton it just wipes the best but they can be cotton poly um old sheets um natural fiber works the best because it's uh more absorbent but we'll take almost any rags um we're always looking for phone books too and toothbrushes and they can be used we use the toothbrushes to kind of clean our our type so did I answer your questions? Oh, the other thing, people make lots of cards, um, like like greeting cards. Um, and yeah, mostly like po little posters and little uh, art prints and, um, and stuff like that. Great, so, thank you. You're welcome. Oh, I forgot to show you our print exchange in the hallway here. Let's see real quick. There's another comment. Diana okay. said, one of my favorite things about Olympia, exclamation point. Oh, that's so nice. I want Diana to get in here, but she's got her own shop. So, so this is the front hallway. Um, this is some of our prints. We've, we've been doing print exchanges for like the past, I don't know, year and a half or so. Um, and these are all prints from different exchanges. Um, that's Lily up here. This was like hand dyed fabric, but um, it is fading, fading in the light. This is um, Catherine Alice Michaelis from Mayday Press. Um, that is Alethea. Naomi. This one I made, um, hard to tell, but it's, um, uh Jessica Spring who lives in Tacoma and runs Springtide Press made this cool furniture that lets you set type in a circle so that was me playing around with that uh, here's one of Kitty's prints this is me because I'm always late I was just experimenting this is um, Emily who teaches at uh, S S I'm sorry uh, Evergreen. Uh, Devin DeMonte this is one of Devin's first reduction lino cut prints. He said it was a real learning process. Um, so yeah, these are just some of our amazing members' prints. This one is. Pretty incredible. This is Kitty. And this one was a money, a money exchange. We were supposed to make things that looked like that were inspired by money. So they're kind of dollar bill shaped. Um, this one Catherine Alice made, and this took 13 passes. This is an incredibly elaborate print. I don't know how she does it. And she used that same um, what what they call the daredevil type, which lets you set in circles and semicircles. There's another one Lily made. Um, this is the back. Oh, this is um, Devin did this with kind of like rubbings. And there's another kitty. This one's mine. <laughs> um, yeah, and then here's some more. This was another exchange. So this is uh, three different exchanges you're seeing on this wall. Here this is um, Jesse that likes to set really small type. So <laughs> on this baby. Okay. That's our exchanges. 
Any other questions? If you didn't have questions, I was going to make a I was going to make a print. Stacy from our view this. Yes. Hi, Stacy. Okay. Oh, Okay, great. I, well, I had a question because this is something that I'm, you know, keenly interested in is like how um, how artists, you know, make a living and pay for the things that they do. But um, is everybody involved in community print a volunteer? Are there any paid um, employees involved, like in accounting or or, or staffing or anything with community? Uh, absolutely print? not. <laughs> We're all volunteers, and all of us have, um, I think pretty much all of us either have full-time jobs or are in school full-time, so uh, we we always need more people. Um, I would yeah. love for us to have, it would be so great if we could like hire somebody to, to do all of that stuff, um, but we just never have been that way. Up until uh, a couple of years ago, we didn't even have a bank account. Um, Oh, wow. <laughs> Michelle, our treasurer, kind of like helped us through that, and uh, Rebecca Potasnik. Um, and uh, yeah, we basically had like a shoebox um, that we would just put our cash in. <laughs> it was, it, it, it's been very loosey goosey for many, many years, and we're kind of slowly trying to like make it a little bit more structured, but um, we really need more members. So it's just, you know. It's, it's hard for five people that are working full time to um, get a lot of the things done that that we would like to. So, um, do you do the five of you who are active um, basically just pay the rent yourself, or how does we pay the rent? <laughs> how do you um, happen? <laughs> we pay the rent when we when we need when we're short, um, and then we also um, we collect a lot of our rent from the classes that we teach. Um, so when we teach the classes, all of that money goes to basically rent and utilities and supplies um, to keep the shop up and running. So, but with, we we are always needing more money. Um, we actually recently just got a uh, like a, a little uh, windfall, not very much money, but enough money to kind of keep us going through this Corona. So the the gentleman that that gave us that um, asked that we not share his name, but he uh, he was very ill and um, he has since passed away. And towards the end of his life, he made a decision to kind of um, give some different uh, arts organizations a little bit of money. And so um, we're super grateful to him. He was a real um, advocate for community print. Listen, so. Oh. I had a few more questions along this yeah. thread. If um, are, so, you allow members um, to do paid production work out of the space. So, like if somebody wanted a concert poster made or whatever, they could they could do that. You know, as you know, on their own in that space, right? Absolutely, guys, we don't care. We don't care if people, you know, profit off of the stuff that they make in the space because the, our our goal is really just to kind of teach people and give them access to the space. So most of the organizing members don't take on jobs like that just because they're, you know, we're all working um, another job as well. Um, but there are, are a few people that uh, make prints and sell them, and you know, do do I think okay, you know as okay as you can do um, as an artist in this area. <laughs> yeah. Well, we don't have I a guess my policy about that, so. Yeah, that's good. Uh, but I, I have thought forever that there's a lot of um, natural affinity between our view of this and um, community print. And uh, we've just been completely, you know, limited on our capacity to sort of reach out and connect and find ways to collaborate but it's always been on my mind especially when you guys were looking for space I was yeah. like oh I wanted you guys like to be our neighbor to somehow like you know come come yeah. in <laughs> somehow but it's so darn hard our space is limited yeah. our ability to just spend time solving problems and reaching out is so limited and uh, and again you know we do have because um, I mean our rent is really expensive I mean it, 
it, it yeah. kind of drives a lot of our programming, a lot of what we're able to do, and kind of how we have to focus yeah. our time. And um, for better or for worse, I mean, it, it does pay other artists who teach. I mean, there, there's there's income, there, there's economic, you know, exchange happening for better or for worse. And um, and I I wish it was. I mean, I, I'm the, I wish all the artists could make money without anybody having to pay for it. <laughs> Agree. Agree. <laughs> I mean, you guys are way more organized than us. You're about like 15 times more organized than us. So. <laughs> but I love. We're, I have been we're super scrappy here. So there's enough. Yeah. Anyway, if there's ever a need to, uh, you know, have an umbrella of a, a, a another arts organization for something, you know, let's let's, you know, I'm. I would love to support you guys however I can. And, and I'd also be interested in, in having a little bit more information on the stuff that you guys are, was on your wish list. Because sometimes okay. people offer stuff to us that we don't necessarily need. And it'd be, you know, it's always good to have them back my mind if there's somewhere else that that stuff can go. Absolutely. Um, I, could, yeah. um, I think our wish list is on our website, which is um, community hyphen print.org. Um, Alethea, when she was our intern, made us a website. We've never had a website before. <laughs> um, so that's pretty exciting. But I think the wish list is on there. And if it's not, I will get it on there. Um, that's where we kind of list our classes and stuff too. And then we're also on Facebook and Instagram. Um, just community print. I think it's community print Olympia. Kelsey, there's yeah. a question. Um, sure question but first I wanted to say um, community print is a nonprofit right a registered We're in a Washington state nonprofit oh, We're not a 501c3 because we haven't gotten our act together to go through that whole process but um, we would like to we've been talking about maybe um, going um, to Shunpike and doing the kind of the umbrella nonprofit that they do um, where you pay them and then they act as your kind of fiscal sponsor. Yeah. Um, but we've been talking about doing that. Question, um, when I asked how much are your classes? So um, if you're just doing the kind of group class, it's $50. Um, if you want to do, if you know you want to do the um, group class and the one-on-one -on -one class, it's $75. Um, how, many for those, yeah. how many classes and for how long? How many classes? And for how long? What's the duration of the classes? Um, usually the classes, um, so the intro class is usually about four to five hours. Um, and that's where you do a group project with usually uh, four to four to five other people. Um, and then the one-on-one -on -one class, if you're doing like a simple project, it can take about four hours. Letterpress, so one of the things that happens is people take the classes they realize that it's incredibly time consuming and then they never come back. <laughs> so, so that happens pretty regularly, but I think people enjoy taking them. Um, but if you're setting like some elaborate type, like a poem or something like that, that could take, you know, eight hours a day. Um, people that set type for books, multiple, multiple days, just really time consuming little hobby. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and the classes, so if you do the $75 package deal, you do the group class and then the one-on-one -on -one class where there's a member just kind of helping you out, and then you're basically released to print independently in the shop, um, and you, the, basically the more time you sign up for to print in the shop, the cheaper it is, so you can sign up for like six months of unlimited printing for $400. You can do a month of unlimited printing for like seventy-five to a hundred dollars, um, or you can do one print job for like fifty dollars. So it gets cheaper if you sign up for. We want we want people in here using the space. So did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Come on in. <laughs> any other questions? So we're gonna we're getting to that wrap up time. So any last questions for Kelsey? I have one last question unrelated to the other topics. Um, do you work with teenagers? Uh, I mean, we would. In non oh, yeah. 
You, you would? Yeah, we could, we would. could and would. Um, we don't really have a policy for like them being in the shop independently. Um, yeah. But we probably should. We do make people sign a waiver because there's things you can hurt yourself on. Um, you can, you know, cross your fingers and things. Um, but yeah, we're we're not. Uh, we've had like some college students in, and um, Nicole's class, one of Nicole's classes at SPSCC has come in. We've done some classes with um, St. Martin students. Uh, we like teenagers. Yeah. Cool. Well, someday when all this virus stuff is over, I might see if I can get a little gaggle of um, teenagers in there. My daughter's 16. Oh, 15. yeah. 15. And she just loves, loves, loves art. She's just um, cranking out artwork like crazy. Um, and everything at our Judas is not cool enough for her. But <laughs> but you guys might be cool enough for her. So <laughs> you will <Cool>. see. <laughs> she has a very, you know, you know, 15 year old filter on everything, like, right. Um, <laughs> anyway, just for the, for the after the virus days. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I might run out of time to make a print for you all, but um, I did want to just show you that I'm making these today. Um, let me turn this around. Come on. Okay. Um, so they say make space, share, and be kind. Um, and I'm just going to make a bunch of those for the Corona times. And if anyone wants one, just get in touch and I'll give you one. This is, um, the type set. This is, um, wood Italian type. So it's a little bit taller than the American type, which is 0.918 inches. Um, and you can see I inked the rollers um, to do kind of like a rainbow roll. So it's blue and green. Um, and then there's a little bit of blue on there. It's mostly green. But if you want one of those, let me know. Um, so this is a very unofficial way of, of printing this. Because this type is a little bit tall um, for our press, I have to kind of uh, flip a switch. Um, Nice to see you too, Stephanie. I saw that one pop up. Um, I have to flip a uh, flip a trigger to get this to kind of run through the press. So this is going to be a little bit wonky, um, and it might be a little bit noisy. But uh, let's see here. So I'm going to turn this around again. I tested earlier, and it didn't sound too loud in my. But you might want to get your volume ready. Oh, and Jesse's here. Have some poster paper here um, and I'm doubling it up because the um, type was printing a little pale so oops. okay let me see if I can do this with one hand so I'm gonna turn the press on Let's see. and you can see um, that the rollers are rolling And then, so there's a little um, foot pedal down here that opens these. And here we go. Like I said, this is not very official. So I think it's very impressive one handed. Yeah. <laughs> barely, barely succeeding here. That is no joke doing it one handed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So there it is. Oh, it's beautiful. And like I said, if you want one, let me know. I'm probably going to just um, put a pile on my porch, and let people do porch pickup. So we use um, drying racks that are very unofficial. <laughs> so, um, we also use a lot of um, like 
the things that you used to use to hold records. These guys up here. We're always looking for those if you have anything like that. Um, Elsie, okay. there's a comment. Sam said, so beautiful. Thank you for sharing your process and space. Ah, that's so nice. I am a big I fan of letterpress. Um, yeah, I think it's a really cool process. I would say if I have to make one point, the point I would make is that it distinguishes from like digital sort of writing or printmaking processes and that it really requires you to not only like think spatially, but just to like spend a lot of time mm -hmm. um, like making changes and planning. It was something I used to work a lot in the Evergreen letterpress with students and I found it was always particularly powerful for writing students because it you know like if you want to set a paragraph of text in a letterpress it's going to probably take you like three hours the first time you do it and for a lot of students i think that was it was like a way of triggering that experience where you had to spend three hours just going over one paragraph over and over um and i think that's, that's really one of the people that set small type <laughs> yeah, I am one of the few people that said small time. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't want to hold everyone up. I think it's fascinating. I think it's really fun. I think, uh, you know, if you like solving puzzles, it's a really good artistic process um, and sort of thinking spatially. It also, once you learn it, you don't really have to know the language. You just kind of have to know, like, those two pieces fit together and they're snug. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. I think that's, I, I would recommend it. Great. That's a very good summary, Jesse. Thank you. Yeah. So, any last questions for Kelsey or Jesse? All right. Thank you so much. Let's hear it for Made Any Print. Woo. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Um, I hope to hear from some of you.